Hello, my name is Felicia Sobani. I'm 15, and where am I from? Good question. I'm German, American, Persian, but I was born in Switzerland, moved to Slovakia, and now I'm currently living in Italy. So to answer the question, I simply consider myself a world citizen. Today I would like to share with you a question that has been on my mind for a long time. Who is writing the future? So this past summer I attended a youth conference in Washington, D.C. And the subject of the conference was the role of youth in today's society. I really didn't know what to expect from this conference. I did have my own opinions on what youth can achieve. But what I experienced at this conference just totally changed my mindset and views on what youth can actually do and have the power to do. So this wasn't a conference of lectures, talk, 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 listen, listen. It was more of an opportunity for youth to come together to discuss and to create plans of social actions and immediately implementing them. And what I found amazing was how the arts were really stressed and how they were integrated in practically every activity we did. I vividly remember I was walking down the hallway and I saw a bunch of youth starting to jam out and they started to drum spontaneously. And then a bunch of other youth started to improvise and sang along to the rhythm while others started to dance. And in no time we were all involved in one way or another. And it was just amazing seeing the different creative expressions and diverse ways that we had. But above all, if I had to choose one thing that I loved most about the conference were the people. It was from them that I just gained so much knowledge, inspirations, and skills. And what I really loved about the conference was how my friends and I, we had a common vision, a unified vision to affect positive and lasting change. The kind of change that starts with the self spreads to the family and community, and finally engulfs the entire globe. And by the end of the conference, I could visualize the potential of the world that we live in, a world characterized by collaboration, not competition, by justice, not corruption, and by love, not hatred. So why were all these conferences held for youth? What makes youth so special. So the world that we live in today obviously has many problems. I think we can all agree on that. And we need to remember that these problems were not caused by youth. They were rather caused by the action, or should I say inaction, of the older generations. And yet, ironically, it is us youth that have to take the responsibility to first stop these problems from growing further, and second, find solutions to, to find solutions to remedy the damages that they have already done. So what I also would like to stress is what really blows my mind is that I was only one out of the 700 youth at that event and that I only attended one conference out of the 114 youth conferences. Some of these conferences were held in places I've never heard of, such as Antananarivo or Kaduganawa. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. So back to what I was saying, how are we going to get to these solutions? Us youth have to solve these problems that were caused by the older generations. Well, global issues, require global solutions. And global solutions require global thinking. And guess what? The past generations have been shaped by local, national, or at best, regional level thinking. They considered something solved as long as it was in someone else's backyard. Let's ship the nuclear waste to another country. Problem solved. But this was a thinking of the past. Today, we live in a generation where we have our cell phones, laptops, technology just surrounding us. I'm sure some of you in the audience have checked your phone at least once while I was talking. And that's because we are globally connected. And who understands this global connectivity the best? It is youth. 
We youth are globally connected all the time, and we are the global thinkers of the future, and we can solve these problems that weren't caused by us and the world challenges. Now, having said all this, I would like to tell you a story. So this past summer, I went to Baltimore, where I go often, and um, a bunch of us youth, we decided to do a service project for our community. So what we really wanted to do, we, we decided to choose, we chose this rundown neighborhood of Baltimore, which has a high rate of drug abuse. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to take the piece of land in their community and change it into a community garden. And our main focus was to involve the children of that time. And that's exactly what we did. We um, started this project and these kids would come every Saturday and Sunday and they were just so excited with big smiles on their faces. They were ready to get their hands dirty and plant seeds and just, they were super excited for this because it wasn't just a garden for anyone. It was their garden. It was their community garden. And it was amazing. So what was great is it was a great success because not only did they learn the importance of gardening, they also learned the importance of working together as a community. So the harvest time was coming closer and closer and the excitement of these kids was just rising and increasing. And it was just uncontrollable, it was amazing. But a week before the harvest day, something unexpected happened. The city workers had mowed down our entire community garden by accident as along with like the rest of the land. And I really didn't know how they could do that because we had watermelons and sunflowers growing, but somehow they did manage to mow down the entire thing. And I mean, us and the kids, we were just so devastated. What were we going to do? Our, all our work was just basically wasted. What were we supposed to do? Well, I'll tell you what we did. We put down our shovels and hoses and we reached for our cell phones instead. And we started calling everyone we knew. We started emailing our friends. We started calling our colleagues and we started texting our family members and told them about this garden and told them what had happened. And the news was just spreading everywhere that even the local TV station of Baltimore decided to air a segment on it. They came to the demolished garden, they interviewed the kids, and it was an amazing experience. So what had happened, so many people heard about it that one day they all came, this large group came and gathered on the garden grounds. And we all together ensured the continuation of this project and we started replanting the garden. And one of the people that came to this event was the deputy mayor, which I found amazing because not only did he apologize for the mistake, he himself rolled up his sleeves and started replanting the garden. And he's a better gardener than myself. So what had, what had started as a small initiative by a small group of youth had scaled up into a large community, uh, large community project. And it was a great experience, an example of showing you how much youth and we can achieve as long as we keep believing and as long as our power and energy is put into good use. So at the same time, I would like to stress that society needs to reevaluate its perception of youth. Society considers the youth as materialistic, lazy, solely fun-seeking, and, and irresponsible. And yes, we can be that sometimes, but that's because society stresses and encourages this through the film industry, music industry, and the media at large. We see the stereotypical image of the youth. We need to fundamentally change that image. We need to fundamentally change our estimation of youth because the youth are the global thinkers of our future and they can solve the world's challenges. So to conclude, I would like to revisit the question in the title, who's writing our future? I think by now we can all agree and confidently answer that the future, its shape, its quality, its potentials and promises lie in the power of youth. And today's youth, I would like to send you a message, please, youth of today and future youth 
like children that are going to become youth. Please remember, value the energy that rests inside of you because it's amazing and it can be used for such good things, but you have to be aware because it can also cause a lot of damages. And to the adults, I would like to say that next time when you see a youth, please look again, but with different eyes, because that youth standing in front of you is potentially the light of the world. Thank you.